Dr. Kenneth Franklin, physician and surgeon. Oh, Rembrandt, huh? Someone has good taste. Mmm, expensive taste. The collection is really his wife's. Do you, uh, know Franklin? Ah, uh, no, why? He doesn't seem to want you on the case. Oh? Any particular reason? He doesn't think a blind man is capable of finding and identifying a painting. It could be difficult, Mike, if the client uh, you're trying to help doesn't want to help you. When has it ever been easy? Never. Lieutenant. Are there any results? Not much. They knew what they were doing. They went right to the painting. That's all we can be sure of. Hi, Duke. Lieutenant, you seen uh, Mike? Yeah, he's around. Excuse me. Uh, Page, I'd like to talk to you. Please do. Shall we? It's about Mr. Longstreet. Dr. Franklin, we've already had that discussion. Yes, well, I still want him off the case. He's disabled. In comparison to what? And to whom? All right, let's call him slightly handicapped. Let's not call him that either. The settlement on my claim is quite substantial. I should think you'd be concerned. I am, Dr. Franklin. I am. But it's my risk, isn't it? So I'll use my man. Mike? Ah, uh, Duke. Dr. Franklin around? Yes. Dr. Uh, Franklin, do you, uh... Recognize this? I found it in the garden. No. Mr. Page has a kind of dogged confidence in your abilities. I have the utmost confidence in Mr. Page's judgment. That Rembrandt cost me a million one. I understand it's insured for a million five. If you don't recover it, it's still a loss to me. Uh, how do you figure that? I turned down two. Two million. From whom? I don't know. The offer was anonymous came through the gallery. They wouldn't budge, huh? No, not an inch. The gallery made the offer for an undisclosed buyer whose identity is privileged information. Well, I admire their professional ethics, but why bother? <laughs> it's part of the mystique of the art world, Nikki. Buying, selling, owning, bargaining. Do you think it's important who made the offer? You know, someone who wanted that painting badly enough to offer two million for it might want it badly enough to steal it. Is that where the Kelmans come in? Well, more or less. Well, it was the Kelmans who made the offer. I do know they once owned the painting. Franklin's bought it at an auction. Hmm. That's hard for me to imagine. The last thing I bought at an auction was a dresser sent me to Babylonia shell. <laughs> Did you hear the sea in it? Only on a clear night. <laughs> I appreciate your stopping by, Mr. Kelman. Tell me, how long did you own the Rembrandt? Generations, Mr. Longstreet. Hundreds of years. The painting is always hung in the house of the eldest Kelman. And his eldest son is bound never to sell it. Was two million your, uh, your last offer? Last, but not final. We authorized the gallery to go to three. The painting is our route. We arrived in New Orleans with the Rembrandt and our rags. Well, without money, there was no way for a fresh start in America. What did I owe to a promise to my father? What did I owe to myself and to William? 
when the auctioneer handed me a check for more than a million. Would you pay anything to get it back? Test us. Name a price. Now, William, it is useless. Franklin would sell. To him, a profit is a profit. Then I don't understand. It's Mrs. Franklin. We had one painting. She has hundreds. She's the only collector that buys, never sells. Uh, you've built up a remarkable collection, Mrs. Franklin. Must take a lot of your time. <laughs> Takes all my time. I, um, I understand that you've never sold a painting. They're not for sale. May I ask why? There's a very private reason. Here you are. Thank you. You're staring at me. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking. Can I trust him? Will he be discreet? Somehow you managed to observe a great deal, Mr. Longstreet. The truth is, I won't part with any of my paintings because they're all I have. Does that sound odd? In these surroundings, a bit. Do you have any children? Yes, one daughter, Marianne. She has her own apartment. Well, you are diplomatic. What about Dr. Franklin? Yes. All we share is the kitchen. We have nothing in common. Do you or Dr. Franklin have any, uh, have any enemies? None that would steal. Or perhaps a disgruntled employee. Oh. There now, you see, never give up. You've drawn blood. We fired a gardener. When? April 10th of this year. You remember the exact date? I haven't forgotten the gardener. Thomas Marlowe. My husband felt he had developed an attraction for me. He accused me of having an affair. I told my husband that, to my regret, it was not true. Hello. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. That's oh, all right, dear. Come in. Have some coffee. Uh, no, thank you. I just stopped by for some books. Oh, well, this is Mr. Longstreet. He's with the insurance company. My daughter. Oh, hello. Hello. I, uh, I heard about the painting. A Rembrandt, wasn't it? You must be very disturbed. Mary Ann's in college. She's nearly finished her postgraduate work. What are you majoring in, Miss Franklin? Oh, I'm majoring in matriculation, for my parents' sake. Mary Ann, the decision was yours. Was it, Mother? Somehow, I'm never quite certain. If there's nothing else, Mr. Longstreet. Uh, no, no. Thank you very much for your time. Max, come. Uh, can I drop you? I'm going your way. How do you know? Instinct. Forward. You're sure my questions don't annoy you? Not a bit. You're not Superman. Something must. Yes, pity. Yes, that would kill me. Why would anyone pity Marianne Franklin? Oh, you know, rich man's daughter, why can't she settle down? Many boyfriends, but none of them right, huh? No, each one of them was right, for a while. You know, I wouldn't miss movies and television as much as I'd miss sports. That's true. I used to get down to the fairgrounds now and then, but uh, it's not the same when you can't see the horses. I'll make up for it, though. How? Oh, oh jogging. A little golf, basketball, skiing. You ski? Oh, a little of everything. But I draw the line at basketball. You know, I go for athletic men. Do you do the mile? Yes. 533. One of my boyfriends did uh, four minutes, 12 seconds. Another's been in semi-pro baseball. One plays tennis. You know a gardener named uh, Thomas Marlowe? I uh, knew he had his eye on my mother. Nothing ever came of it. You sure? I have been there myself, at least twice too often. Well, we're certain we're dealing with an international art ring. Maybe the lieutenant's looking for a trip to Paris. No, I don't think so. He's dead serious. You check out the Kelmans? Yes, and they both have airtight alibis and not each other. How does the lieutenant explain the funny skid marks? Bicycles. Bicycles? Doesn't sound like an international art ring. Sounds like a bunch of kids. 
Kids who took the alarm system out like pros. Now, oh, wait a minute. All that blood breaking that pane of glass. Now, that's amateur night. Curiouser and curiouser. Hey, do you want our jambalaya spicy or, uh, or bland? Hot. Bland. Oh. Okay, hot. That gardener, Thomas Marlowe, is also a dead end. He's been in Maui since June. Becky, did uh, Mrs. K leave the uh, Chablis in the refrigerator? Ready for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in an ice bucket, please. Mike, we're in trouble. Well, as always, Lieutenant Weber's theory. You already shot Weber down. Mike, we are in trouble. Mike. After dinner, Duke. <laughs> okay, let me guess. You're not certain, so you're not saying anything. Hmm? Not a word. But there is a piece of evidence. Well, as possible. There's nothing left except that ski mask, and uh, I've already checked that upside down and sideways and couldn't find a thing. Oh, no, not oh. upside down, Duke. Inside yes, out. Mike, it's Lieutenant Weber. Lieutenant Weber? Oh, yeah, well, I want to talk to you. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh, much obliged. What's inside? An odor. Hairspray. Anybody home?
Hello? You must be Marianne's roommate. Where'd you learn to see in the dark? <laughs> I didn't. My apologies. Mine for intruding. Your door was unlocked. I'll call it even up if you let me get you a drink. Deal. Scotch, neat. How'd you know I'd be here? How did you guess that I wasn't Marianne? Hairspray. Here you are. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Marianne said to expect you. When did she tell you that? When she finished packing. She uh, didn't happen to say where she was off to, did she? If it happened, she did not. Where does Marianne uh, take her skiing vacations? If you knew, you wouldn't tell me. You pick up quick. A multiple choice. We can either talk about you or about me. Let's talk about you. Lenore Crowley, old friend of Mary Ann's, her father's secretary, almost part of the family. So, if she's in trouble, you find her. Don't ask me to help. Is she? No, she isn't. She's working at it. Hello? Just a moment. Mike! Mike, telephone. It's Marianne Franklin. Well, I'm glad I called before you found me. Actually, you didn't. You've been living on Dauphine Street. Why didn't you come for me? No, I tried that once. Something was troubling you, something you didn't want to talk about. It wasn't your address I needed, it was your help. It's been a long time since I've been a help to anyone. I'm used to being more of a convenience. It turns out there is something I should tell you. The ski mask is mine, but there was uh, more than one. I bought four or six, I don't remember. For a while, I did uh, quite a bit of skiing with uh, one particular boy. He's in Gestad. Who is? Carl Bader. He was in Switzerland the night the painting was stolen. How did you find out about Carl? Same way we found out about all the others. You could have skipped the word all. <laughs> well, my life is an open book, isn't it? Go on. No, that's all. Oh, you've hardly scratched the surface. Would you like my list? All right, starting from the present. No present. Casey and I tore it up about uh, a month ago. Casey? Casey Davenport. Always end like that, torn up? When you leave a man, he has to have the last say. You're always the one who does the leaving. Seems so. Why? Fear. Of what? Of getting to the point where I can't. Like your parents, huh? Like most people, I guess. Marianne. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be prison. No, it doesn't have to be. But when it is, there's just no way over those walls, is there? Have the insurance people seen you? A man named Longstreet. Interesting man. Quite charming. Yes, he is interesting. He's also one of the best. I'm glad. Maybe you'll find your painting. I'd just as soon have the insurance money. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Did you get a clean bill of health? Clean. Good, good. Has he questioned you? No. 
Not really. So you haven't heard anything from the thieves? No. Nothing. Should we have? Depending on the motive for the robbery, there's sometimes a, a note or a phone call proposing a deal. What do you mean, depending on the motive? It could be money, of course. Or there might be some personal motive. Sometimes the uh, insured himself uh, arranges the theft, keeps the item, and pockets the insurance money. Are you suggesting that I arrange this theft? Not at all. I'm only answering Mrs. Franklin's question. Well, there's been no phone call, no notes. And incidentally, no insurance payment. These things take time. What's your man Longstreet doing with his time? He's not my man, Dr. Franklin. He's his own man. And what he's doing with his time is looking for your Rembrandt. That's the main thing, isn't it? Good night. I'll let myself out. I have the impression Mr. Page was trying to tell us something. Mm. Such as? That he's become aware of our financial situation. Money. There is no money. I can't create it out of thin air. Where's it all gone? I might ask the same question. I can account for every penny. So can I. But I won't. What do you think Mr. Longstreet would say, Kenneth? If he knew how many of our problems will be solved by the stealing of this Rembrandt. Marianne hasn't left many fond memories behind, has she? No. One's back in England, one in California, one in New York. Several we haven't found. How can you be sure one of her old beaux was involved in the robbery? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's just a feeling. Imagine someone involved with Marianne feeling there was something special between them. And just when he was deciding it was so real, it was for good, she walks out. Sounds to me like she's afraid to make a commitment. What do you suppose she's after, Nick? Mm, a refuge. A stopping place. <laughs> Wait a minute now. I'm just a guy holding a lantern looking for an honest man or an old master. Ah, that's Casey's place coming up. Davenport? Right as ring. What's yours? Mike Longstreet. You been here before? No. Thought so. Never forget a face. Uh, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Forget it. Okay, that's a deal if the first one's on me. All right, uh, draw one. No collar. Told you my name is Casey. The uh, fellow drinking bourbon. I can just tell he's drinking bourbon. Well, he, uh, he reeks of it. Fair enough. Cheers. Cheers. What was your best year? At what? Pitching. All right, all right. What's a gag? No, it's no gag. You hand me the beer with your left hand. The name Casey Davenport belongs to a six-foot southpaw who was uh, getting pretty hot in the minors and then quit the game. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. A fan. Oh, uh, something like that. Something more. Uh-huh. I'm an insurance investigator, Casey. Well, are you, uh, investigating something to do with me? No, the, uh, Franklins. Marianne. Mm-hmm. Is she in trouble? Someone bagged one of their paintings. <laughs> Franklin won't miss it. Uh, that was the wrong thing to say, right? <laughs> what were you doing Monday night, Casey? Nothing. I was watching television. I room alone. I slept alone. No witnesses, no alibi. Am I under suspicion? Not yet. We used to come here. 
Marianne and me used to dance a little, uh, drink a little, hold hands under the table. Do you know why I stand here night after night on duckboards getting flat feet? Because I hope some night to see Marianne walk in. <laughs> Looking for me. Thanks for the beer, Casey. Max. Deal. Forward. Mike, when you were in that bar talking to Casey, I saw someone come out who looked familiar. I couldn't place him then, but it was William Kelman. Well, it's a college hangout. Kelman's about college age. You suppose he knows Casey? Well, if he does, maybe onto something. lunch. Oh, delicious and fattening. <laughs> Two do seem to go together, don't they? What are you reading? Hmm? What are you reading? Oh, uh, Pascal. I recommend it for a change when a case is at a dead end. Let me see if I can find that thing. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, right, here it is. All the troubles of man come from his not knowing how to sit still. Hmm. Too bad the doctor doesn't read Braille. Oh, then his wife's suspicions are well-founded, huh? In bedrock. And no pun intended. Who? Lenore Crowley. Le... Well... Marianne's roommate. Mm-hmm. The doctor's secretary. And they're very discreet. You know, Nikki, it occurs to me that if, uh... if Dr. Franklin needs money, has no real interest in his wife's paintings, who else knows about Lenore? Well, I can only vouch for you and me and a gossipy waitress. I wonder if Marianne knows. What did you find out? I went back for some of my things, and uh, Lenore told me. Just blurted it out. As if what was it worth if nobody knew? Is she always truthful? Oh, Mike, it, it fits. I mean, it fits her, and it fits my father. Lenore's only a few years older than I am. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Because you're Mike Longstreet. And how many are there like you in the world? If you're looking for certainty, that's not reasonable. I don't want certainty. I don't want to be reasonable. I I'm sorry. I wanted to see you because I trust you. Oh, no, that's the first step. To what? Trusting yourself. Lieutenant Weber's got a new item. Casey Davenport spent 90 days in the pokey. How was he going to save the world? He was saving a 14-karat gold watch. They caught him on the way out of the jewelers. They've got to pay. From what you've told me, that seems out of character for him. Uh, he may have thrown a knuckleball right past me. Davenport Casey. Yeah, now I remember. Tall, thin fellow. Garvey's bunkie. 90 days. You know what Davenport costs a taxpayer? There's nothing in his record? No. Nope. Blank. He came and he went. All right, what about, uh, what about what's his name? His, uh, his cellmate. Garvey? Garvey, now there's a big push. Now tell me something about him. <sighs> Not now, Longstreet. When? Maybe never. Sooner than never. This is a long haul line. I'm in from Pittsburgh on a straight push. I got in mind a beer and a bunk. That an affair with your plans? Yes, it does. I'll tag along. Come on, tag along. Thanks, forward. Over here. My first jolt and stir, I was 11 and a half. Purse snatching. 
Since then, I've done time for crib cracking, badgering, porch climbing, and finding out hot cars. Uh, is there anything new in that to you? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. You know, now and then I get visitors. They all know more about me than my mother. Now I'm spinning a truck for this line. If they're happy with me at the end of a day's work, I'm as good as anybody in who's who. Till next morning. What can you tell me about Casey Davenport? Nice kid. Did he ever marry the heavy bankroll? Marion Franklin? That's the one. No. Tough break. Well, that's Casey's style. Everything breaks tough. You seen him? That's just the birdhouse. Hang loose. Lieutenant Weber has decided the Rembrandt's left New Orleans. Based on what? A feeling in his bones. Where is it then? Asia? Australia? No, apparently it hasn't left the country. He has customs. Weber's alerted every port of embarkation. Then he's waiting for the call that some agent found the painting rolled up in the thief's blue pajamas, yeah, huh? Yeah, something like that. Oh, Mike, are we doing better? No. Now we're both going on instinct. You look discouraged. <laughs> Does it show? Not often. It isn't just the painting, is it? Ah, uh, just chalk it up to pure and simple frustration. Or to what Franklin said about you being handicapped. He was just fencing, Mike. Yeah, he scored a hit. A touch, maybe. And you think you have to parry by getting the painting back. Wouldn't be the first time that an insurance company paid a claim. How do you know how Duke is? Acts as though the money's coming out of his own pocket. I tell you, Nicky, it's a puzzle. Garvey's got the ability, but he's vouched for it. I talked to his boss. He was on his way to Pennsylvania the night the painting was stolen. <laughs> and then there's Casey. Yeah, he's up with us. He's, he's got no alibi, but he doesn't seem like the type. And the Kelmans. Yeah, oh, they want the painting back, but... You're forgetting someone. What about Marianne? I don't mean she had anything to do with the robbery. But she left behind a dozen ex-boyfriends. Ski bums, surf bums, low riders. Any one of them might be guilty. Yeah. Or maybe Lieutenant Weber is right, and the, uh, the girl with the broom is hanging in a private collection, and we'll never see it again. No, he's not. Here's a photograph of the painting and a note. They're not fencing the Rembrandt or smuggling it out in blue pajamas. They're holding it for ransom, and they want money, Mike. $200,000. Now, there's no stakeout. The ransom money will be paid in used and unmarked bills with random serial numbers. Tell me, how, how do you expect to catch the thieves? That's Mike's department. His and Lieutenant Weber's. Is that all? Your insurance company is, is willing to risk $200,000, and uh, Mr. Longstreet is going to make the exchange? That's right. The letter was addressed to Mike. But he won't see the thief. They've been ahead of you from the very beginning, haven't they? I know it looks that way. Mrs. Franklin, uh, when was the last time you saw your daughter? A few days ago, a week. Why? I've talked to her a few times. She seemed... Unhappy, she is. Lonely. Among other things, many other things that Marianne has never been without is companionship. Have either of you met any of her boyfriends? Have they been at the house? We've met some of Marianne's friends, of course. What are you driving at? A motive beyond profit, access to the house, the layout. Any number of people would have such knowledge. You both seem to want to attribute this theft to some sort of personal vendetta. There are thieves who steal for profit, are there not? Surely you don't think Marianne had anything to do with the robbery. No, maybe not directly, but someone she knew, someone who wanted to get even with her, to hurt her. For what? Why would anyone want to hurt her? Because she couldn't love them, Dr. Franklin. Doesn't make sense. What's the use of following their instructions to the letter if you don't expect them to deliver the painting? It's not a question of no sense, Nicky. It's a question of no choice. What sort of a choice is a double cross? Uh, we won't be double crossed. I just don't expect them to walk up, take the money, and handle the painting. Mike, if we don't get the Rembrandt back. You know, a stolen Rembrandt will never cool off the minute they feel safe, they'll return it. Now, what about the ransom? Who cares about an insurance company's $200,000? I do, Mike. I don't want to lose the money any more than you do. Yeah, well, give me a slight edge, Mike. It's my company's money. You having second thoughts? Third thoughts. Now, I agree with you, Mike. They won't just hand over the painting. 
But how do we know they won't hang on to it or maybe destroy it and keep holding us up for more money? Is that you talking or some vice president? It's both, Mike. Now, backing you with the Franklins is one thing. But let's face it, what have we got going for ourselves, hmm? Are you hoping they'll slip and talk so you can recognize the boys? Maybe. I see. And if they come within reach, you'll throw a butterfly net over their heads and pin them with a hammerlock, huh? That's not much, Mike. That's all we've got. I'm sorry. No deal. No money. There's no other way. To do what? There's no way for me to quit just once, Duke. There's just no way. Traffic never lets up. No, they chose well. When you see the lights blink behind us, Nicky, go a quarter of a mile, pull over and let me out, and then keep going. No tricks. No tricks. I drive 15 minutes, turn around, and come back. You'll be waiting. Oh, Mike, you will be waiting. Yes. I see it, Mike. All right. simpler to bring the Rembrandt. Well, we can't keep this up all night. Time's against you. sometimes. Yes, I've noticed that. Uh, any things in particular? Well, last night Lieutenant Weber had some men in the area of the drop, but not close enough to blow the deal. No, I managed to accomplish that without any help. But he had them in the area, and they picked someone up, Mike. Casey. No, the Kelman kid. Kelman? Yep. <laughs> yes, and he said he was on his way to or from someplace, right? And uh, didn't know what they were talking about. 
Uh, that's about the gist of it, yes. And he didn't have any of your $200,000 either, did he? A uh, big $19 and some change. But you said it was Casey in that alley. What made you think it was Casey? I still think it's Casey. Why? Why? $200,000, Duke. Now, here. $200,000. No more jerking suds waiting for Mary Ann to come through a door. No more Mary Ann. Who needs her? Who needs to be just another pair of pants sandwiched between a, a ski mask and whoever comes next? $200,000, Duke. Now, you come on over here and try and get it from me. What? Come on, come over here and try and take it away from me. It's gotten into you. And when you come, come for real. Mike. Come on, come on! Mike. Oh, come on, come on. But watch out, because I can hear every move you're making. Come on. Oh. That's right. Now get the money, Duke. Get the money. Get the money. Okay, I got it. All right, now, why did you grab me with your left arm, Duke? You're right-handed. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you're holding your revenge. You're to hell with you, Marianne. You're 200,000 to hell with the world dollars in your right hand. Well, back there in that alley, I was grabbed by a right arm, Duke. Because the southpaw who was attacking me was holding the money in his left. All right. The man was left-handed, maybe. Maybe it was Casey. But where's the evidence, Mike? The money, where's the money? Kelman didn't have it on him, and he didn't hide it. At least Weber hasn't found it, and he certainly didn't leave it there. All right, go on. Well, if Casey took it with him, where is it? Weber checked him out, and he's clean, too. Wait a minute, why are we assuming that Casey took the money with him all the way? Where else could it go? Nicky, wait a minute, that alley, that was, uh, Two blocks north of Route 61? Right. Yes, uh, Jonathan Stather, please. Yes, Mr. Stather, uh, it's Mike Longstreet. Can you tell me where Garvey is right now? He's sleeping. This late? Oh, well, where'd he come in from? Minneapolis. Does he swing down through Mobile or Baton Rouge? That's right, Route 61. Thank you. Casey passed the money to Kelman and then got away. Kelman passed it to Garvey, who was driving his rig in, but Kelman got caught. Been waiting for you. I know. <laughs> Casey, I'm sorry. About us. About everything. They've picked up Garvey and Kelman. <laughs> I loved you. And when we split up, my fell apart. I couldn't have done it myself. I, I didn't even think of it. Kelman came to me. And I spoke to Garvey. One wanted the money. One wanted the painting. And I just wanted you. There's no damage at all. Well, we have our daughter to thank for that. She certainly picks reliable friends. Now that he's down, how else do we kick Casey Davenport? Oh, the law will take care of Casey. And the other two. How about us? Don't any of us have a share in what Casey did? That's nonsense. No, it's not. Explain it, then. I can't. You know I can't, and you know why I can't. I'm going to find Casey a lawyer. No, you're not. Yes, I will. Somebody has to plead for Casey. Do you object, Mike? No. Good.
Can I drop you downtown? Yes, thanks. Goodbye. Thanks, sir. I'm still a bit afraid. Now and then, so am I. But you never seem to be. That's the idea. Do you always solve more than one problem on your cases? Sometimes I get lucky. 